Welcome to Inspired Artist Podcast. I am speaking with the Clarity Sisters today. So that is Karina Oxley and Ondine Carrington. They're from the UK and uh, they contacted me via Facebook. We know each other through the Joshua community, through Gary Bodley and Ondine offered to give me a reading that they do to give me a taste of what they do. And I was so uh, so delighted by what came back um, that I definitely wanted to speak with them. So I think you're really going to enjoy this. The person that they channel is their grandfather, I found out, whom they never met, but who dedicated his life to proving that psychics exist. And um, that's what they're continuing uh, to do, which is a sort of a beautiful generational healing. And yeah, we're just going to have a conversation with the two of them. I'm going to share a little bit about what they wrote for me. All right, let's get into this. Here we go. Go. All right. Well, hello. Welcome. Hi, Porter. How are Hi. you? Good. It's, it's sleepy, actually. <laughs> a little bit. I would. It's it's not early here, but. For whatever reason, I yeah, we're 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 going through. I have two kind of sick kids, so. We're, um, oh no! Been there, yeah. done that. Very, <laughs> very, very, very tiring, especially the three or four a.m.s. Yeah, <laughs> well, they yeah, they're not waking up, but I don't know. There's something. There's something kind of moving through. I think so. Um, yeah, uh, how maybe. are you both doing? Yeah, all all good. We've had a heat wave here in the UK, so it's a bit of a heavy weather energy oh. here actually and uh, I think also with the 7-7 portal so yeah we're just coming out of that so yeah it feels a bit bright brighter today than it did yesterday yesterday was very very heavy you you did a reading for me recently which is um well it wasn't the reason that I wanted you on but I thought it would be fun to to chat about your readings first and then maybe we can talk about um the healing sessions that uh that Karina is doing um so what what exactly I know you've been through you know Gary's boot camp and actually funny enough I think that's going to be the episode right before this so maybe people will listen to that and be more familiar with that and then um hear about how about y'all um what was the the spark I guess for creating this Clarity Sisters collaboration um, do you uh, well, go yeah I'll go go first I think the thing is that um, Karina and I have always been so connected we're very close in age and we've always been there for each other and we did David Strickle's tire practice together and then Karina did remotely in a sort of on-off way which Gary uh, Temple Bodley was very kind and allowed me to send her the information that I did in the boot camps. So I did 16 boot camps and the Ascension experience. So we're very connected and we were always guiding each other and giving each other advice uh, on various things and to our friends and me through my reflexology and facial reflexology practice. And I think Karina through her a Reiki healing practice. And then we just said, you know, we want to do something different. I, I, I more uh, work in, uh, excuse me, in a sort of, uh, I have some restaurants that I have, but I what my true desire is to help people and follow my sort of life's purpose, which is more spiritual and esoteric than what I do as my day-to-day -day job. And I think, Karina, that was probably your inspiration as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think that we're very, very connected. We're one of three sisters. Um, and Ondi and I have always had a great connection and got on well. And then my journey unfolded rather later than Ondi spiritually. But suddenly we were able to deliver the same messages as each other without actually communicating about the message. And so we started to give readings to people who had a question. And we were able to deliver the same answer but without communicating with each other. And we have a connection to our grandfather who helped us along the way to do it. And 
so we can both deliver the same message but with a slightly different perspective but still saying the same thing and we thought well let's do this we love doing it we love to help we love to help people on their journey and and give them answers to perhaps what they're seeking and that's how it came about really that's really sweet your your mother was it sounded like from reading your your bios that your mother was all about helping people too is that do you think that that was kind of a big influence for you uh, yeah. very very definitely um when when she passed away we, we we grew up in a small fishing village in Ireland and half the village came out uh behind the hearse when we went through the village uh on, on her funeral and she was so kind to people and so kind to animals and she rescued so many animals and birds and she was very spiritual uh, way back in the sort of 60s 70s she was doing yoga practice in her bathroom our father who wasn't spiritual at all called it hissing and he'd say your mother's hissing upstairs uh, every night and she used to take his places to all these sort of spiritual places see reflexologists acupuncturist uh, go to spiritual meetings and all sorts of things and also she followed a guru in india uh for her latter years of her life and that gave her great happiness actually she was so happy uh, to sort of engage and learn. And I think that's what I I loved about her. She was always open to things. So yeah, there was a very, very early uh, precedent set, not so much uh, in religion, but being open to w- what is basically. Why do you not sound Irish? <laughs> that's a silly question, but I just, it's going through my, my head. It's very sim- a very obvious question. Um, <laughs> our parents spent a great deal of money working and earning to send us to boarding school in England. Ah. So I had a broad Irish accent till I was about 18, 19, and then one day it just disappeared overnight. Um, but we still go back, and my husband says when I go back to Ireland, I sound very Irish. But it just cut kind of ironed out along the way I think Mm, okay but uh that's why okay okay I I wondered about that when I read that you grew up in Ireland I was like well no none of you sound like you're Irish Mm. um so so thank you for that (laughs) so what has been well I'm gonna ask you about something that I saw on your website so I think you specified to people when they would ask you a question that you can't give like yes or no answers has that been kind of someone's expectation that you're now responding to, or is that just something you sort of figured people might think? Uh, Ondine, do you want to answer that one, or I can? Yeah, yeah, you answer that one, and I can always add a bit in later. <laughs> so I think, you know, in this day of litigation for starting for a very basic thing, is you, as you know, let me reverse that. You cannot give people a yes or no answer because it is their choice. You can't take away people's choice. So if they choose to go down the left path, we can't say that's right or that's wrong. We can only give a perspective on it. I think, um, and we have to be very clear about that. It is not for us to determine whether a medical uh, issue is right or, you know, issue a medical diagnosis is right or wrong I think everyone has choice and we're not qualified that's not what we do I think I think uh, it's, it's not for us and, and as I'm going back to the litigation thing you can't say I'll give you yes or no answer if you look at anybody's websites they don't but mm-hmm. we feel that you you can't take away people's choice. We can only give a perspective or clarity or a different, you know, different perspective. On we can't say this is right, this is wrong, because that's not right. We're not clairvoyants. We're not psychics. We're not, we're just oh, energy yeah. readers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but we connect energetically. And I think the thing is, 
that we, we when we connect with people's energy, we are able to uh, connect with our grandfather. So there's like a little circle of three, like our own little Wi-Fi system that uh, Karina and I tap in to his Wi-Fi. And then that gives us uh, two perspectives, which we wouldn't want to say yes or no, or leave somebody, or, you know, if there's a marriage uh, crisis and somebody says, you know, do you think I should get divorced? Well, it's not for us, but what we can do is lead them to their own answer, which is what we want to do. We, we don't, we don't want to, um, give, give anybody an answer, whether we might feel it might be appropriate for them to leave their partner. Um, that, that, that might be our own opinion, but we can't create in their reality only in ours. So what we think in ours won't be appropriate for them and theirs. And it is through our answers, some of which are, uh, uh, sorry, uh, sort of fables and slight riddles and anal analogies, um, the person is then able to get their own answer. Because in, in your case, I think if we may say, you know, Karina was talking about the life raft to you, which I only read afterwards. And then I was speaking about the train analogy. Um, so each, each reading comes from a different perspective, but at the end of the, 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 the uh, at the end of the line, like the train line, um, they, they, they converge and, and give the same message. So yeah, that's why we're quite careful about that and we wouldn't want to do that. So I hope, hope that gives us a, a, a good vibration not to have to, not to um, tell anybody what they should or shouldn't do. And it's a more neutral answer mm -hmm. that we'd like to give. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what has been, if anything, kind of the most surprising aspect of doing this or things that you've discovered about yourselves or just, I guess, any, any kind of, I guess, personal insights that you've had as a result of, of answering these questions for people? Yeah, I'll, I'll go for this because uh, yesterday I said, I'd really like to bring something new to Porter's podcast that people haven't heard before. And it came straight to me when I was um, cleaning the floor in my kitchen. Quite often if I'm ironing or um, washing my kitchen floor, I always get these things and I have to rush to the sideboard and write something down. And that is energetic expansion and energetic contraction. And I was thinking because we connect energetically and it is all about energy. And energetic expansion is where we are in the flow of everything going right. And energetic contraction is when we're in the flow of everything going wrong so we know about the flow of everything going wrong so uh, we have a saying in the UK that you know if one thing goes wrong in your house two more things are going to go wrong it always happens in threes I don't know if that's a saying in America but we say this over here and so that sort of sets the precedent when your washing machine breaks down you say oh goodness you know something else is going to break the boiler's going to go and then i'm going to get a flat tire so that sets up the energetic contraction which i believe and we've spoken about this today actually is the auric field the energetic expansion of a human being the sort of light and vibration that we give out so when we're feeling low we're contracted, but when we're feeling really good, we're expanding out. So let's say we go, we've got a wedding and we go and choose a dress. And we're not very happy wearing the dress to go to the wedding and we go to the wedding. It's not very good and nobody really speaks to us. That's because we've contracted in and we're not attracting all the energy that we could around us. On the other hand, the night before we go, we suddenly go on Amazon and say, oh, I'm gonna just buy this cheap dress and it arrives, it's really good, you put it on, you go to the wedding and suddenly everybody's talking to you and chatting to you because you've energetically expanded. So you're feeling light, vibrant and good and this all comes to you. So I think this is what works with us, with um when when we do answers to people we're picking up on their energetic contraction or expansion would you agree Karina? absolutely a hundred percent i mean it's sort of uncanny that we both get the same answers in a different way and it's like i can pick up on so we pick up on the energy of the question we never discuss it before we sit down we just say right a question is coming from x and we go okay 
should we do it at seven o'clock tonight or whatever? And we both meditate at the same time. And then we just write. And then we swap notes at the end. It's like, wow, that's similar. And the only thing we do is perhaps alter the punctuation. That is it. And so it is all about energy. And like my healing is about energy. I don't have any concept about what I do. It just happens. It's just all energetic. That, so I'm not sure that I explained this, but when the the process that we went through, that I went through is I asked you a question. In fact, maybe I'll share it. Um, we, you both sat down at the same time and answered the question. And then you sent the, the document back to me, but then Karina offered to do a, oh, and I should say the, <laughs> The response that I got, the the answer to the question from both of you, from with the the, the life raft and the the train analogies, um, I would I would I opened it while I was at Whole Foods. I'm not sure if you have an equivalent in the UK. It's like an organic grocery store. I was sitting outside, and I was just like crying as I'm as I'm reading this. It was so beautiful. Um, it and 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 I will I will read some of it. Um actually let's stop there because I'll uh, I'll talk about your the healing session afterwards so that we don't get um I don't get too ahead of myself but time seems to be quite meaningless when I'm <laughs> excited to share something. So my question to you would uh, says it would be around the tension I've been experiencing in my shoulders and neck and upper back. It relaxes to a point sometimes, but for weeks now, it feels like my shoulders are magnetized to my ears. Everything feels tense. About a month ago, I went on a trip with my kids and without my partner, the tension melted away. Upon return, it came back. I was inspired to change my pillow. The next day I felt better, but then the tension crept back. So this is just this ongoing thing that that happens. I, I, th I think I've had it since I was a, a teenager, but for whatever reason, it's just sticking around more here. And I think it's trying to get a message to me more um uh vocally but it you're so Karina's was the first one that I read and it said um we are amused that you asked this question for sur surely you know the answer yourself you are but a life raft providing opportunities for people to hang on to imagine your shoulders as the handles pull on the life raft um this of course was your choice, but now your body is showing you that you need to release all the burdens that you carry. These burdens may not be from the now, but may extend into the past and beyond. And then it, it goes on. Um, and, uh, talks about my children and, and, uh, my, my partnership. And then on Dean, we can pick out other parts of it. If you feel like, um, they might be fun for people to hear as well, but I don't want to read the whole thing. Um, so, and then Ondine wrote, uh, connecting with the vibration and frequency of your question, it's no surprise that your words relay so much about you from your name, Porter Singer to the vibrational frequency and musical light energy codes that play through you and through your music, your email emits and vibrates the true earth song, sorry, your soul emits and vibrates the true earth song or song. Sometimes people have to reincarnate to do what they previously wanted to do in another life. This is your vocation, so to speak. Uh, oh, the, okay, this part's interesting. Let us start with the musical note or tone of your question. It's a bit out of tune for you. You think it is perhaps one thing, but in light velocity and frequency, it can be many things. It goes on. But what I thought was interesting about both of these is that you both started basically telling me like, well, this is sort of a weird question. <laughs> yeah. Yes, definitely. Because we we see you as this sort of high <laughs> vibrational light being the energetic expanded person, and the it was out of tone because it was sort of slightly energetically co contracted for you, and this I think where it fits in so well that we we on the surface we can all look like we're energetically expanded but sometimes we do go into the energetic con contraction and I think an energetic connect contraction is a bit like if anybody's listened to any of Gary's manifestation events it's a bit like having a manifestation event 
a, a, an energetic contraction where you go in and then you think, okay, well, I've just walked into the supermarket. I've had a fantastic day. Somebody's bumped my trolley in the grocery store and all my eggs have fallen on the floor. And then you think, well, why has this happened to me? Ah, I now know because I was bad tempered about parking my car when I'd had a great day just before I walked in. So it's just a little, a little, uh, out of tune yeah. note to to tell us just to go back into the right frequency yeah did you want to say something about that Karina or... no I was saying it's just like a reminder we get the reminders all the time as like Gary talks about the manifestation events but I think you know it's it's very easy for whatever reason for Ondin and I to sort of see a different perspective and give clarity, which is why we're called Clarity Sisters. I think we are unique in that I don't know anyone else who can do this. I could be wrong, but we just have this unique connection that we can just deliver. And it, it's so wonderful because when we're both doing it, it's it's filled with so much love for the client. I mean, I got so much love for you, Porter, coming through to try and help you to let you gain clarity, but also let you find the answer yourself, which Ondine said earlier. Mm. And, um, it's like they were amused because they said, well, you already know the answer. Why are you asking? But, you know, as a human, you need reassurance, don't you? We all just want a little little reassurance. We're saying the right thing, doing the right thing. But yeah. We do well, I think it's it's one thing to sort of, I guess intuit your answer and kind of know what's going on, but it's another to just be kind of like going, okay, well, if I know, then why is it still here? You know, I think yeah. is a is a thing. So we're probably giving you answers quite often or perspectives that you probably already know. But you know, being human, we like validation, and that's another sort of thing mm. that we help with. Yeah, yeah. Do you? Um, what was the what was the reason that you chose to do the the answers at the exact same time like what what would be vibrationally different I guess if you were to do it one day even if you didn't talk about it you know and, and do the other is there something that happens for you in that doing knowing that the other sister is doing it with you, you want to yeah, I that? think yeah I think it's like a double uh double frequency a double magnitude and also, it, if we do it simultaneously, then uh, it is uh, more, it's, it's stronger, I would say, much yeah. more so. It, it, it's, it's like a double amplitude, um, especially tuning into our grandfather, Walter, who, who was a psychic researcher in the 30s and he spent his entire life uh researching uh psychics as to whether they were real not real he became a fellow of various institutes in london helped set up various sort of psychic study groups and i don't know his energy just seems to make my uh, help my um yeah get, make make me more clear and give me a little bit more clarity uh at the same time as Karina so I think yeah we we, we like to do it together don't we and then yeah. there's there's no um I know there's no time uh so we both sit in the present whereas if I'd sat before her I'd be in the past and if she sat after me she'd be in the future mm -hmm. sort of kind of thing we, we we'd like to do it in the now moment mm. absolutely and I think that the information the love and the knowing is magnified doing it together a hundred percent yeah it's it's just you know walter is always here he's always with me he just wants to come through and chat because he's all his life he tried to prove that it was possible that was his life works he was a cambridge scholar and, and people pooed pooed him and, you know, he was born too early, really. Um, whereas now it's so accepted and un understood by so many that 
he's so thrilled, I think, wouldn't you agree, Ondine, to have the opportunity to come through. Yeah. He's just like, You're... oh, I want to come through and talk. I want to, you know, this is amazing. And it's extraordinary that as his grandchildren, he died long before we were born. We had no connection mm. to him. Oh. Extraordinary. So, what an anyway. amazing, what an amazing ancestor to have. That's really, I, I didn't even think to ask about Walter, but that's, that's really cool. Yeah. So yeah. he, he didn't, did he reach any sort of conclusions about psychics and like, did he believe in them or was he just he, sort of fascinated? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think he did, but he, I think they're also for want of a better use of old fashioned word, there are a lot of charlatans out there. Okay. And he was trying to, I think really, if correct me if I'm wrong on you, but I think he was trying to prove a lot of telepathy. But I think that telepathy now, he would change that word. He would say, I wouldn't be trying to prove telepathy. I've been trying to prove channeling or something but he did conduct a lot of experiments on telepathy you know like at one o'clock let's both think of an egg and see what you get or what I get you know and in a way Ondine and I are doing a more sophisticated version of Walter's telepathy mm. I think that's what he would say what do you feel like is because you I've, I've heard you say a few times you know we're not psychics what what is the key differential for you between what you do and what psychics do? Ondine, do you want to answer that? Or yeah, well, I'll answer for myself. Um, yeah. I I I don't get uh, a psychic or medium sometimes channel dead dead people or ancestors or whatever. Uh, I know Walter has passed on. It, for me, it's only his energy. I. I don't get anything else. I don't get any answers for other people about their life path or, or what they should be doing. Uh, like, you know, you're going to get on a number 10 bus in London, the red bus, and go to this particular train station at this time. That's not how it works. Mine's more a more guided meditation, energetic interpretation of the answer to the question so that... A, a, a client can get much more value out of it because it's all very well to get to pay you know a lot of money to go and see somebody and they give you a quick few answers which make you feel good at the time but we we, we sincerely hope that anybody reading what we write afterwards they can keep it and you know in a year's time or two years time they don't need to keep coming back to us that that message that they get um you know, and it's not too short, it's not too long. I think it's a nice little um, PDF where they can um, carry on and, and using that. So, yeah, the, the word doesn't sit comfortably with me uh, at all, medium psychic, or even for me, Karina's m a much better, I would call Karina channel. I'm not so much. I, I think I just connect, um, as I said in my bio, when I was younger, uh, my our parents did argue a lot whether it affected Karina as much as it affected me. I don't know, but I'd wake up in the morning and I'd literally touch the door handle and I would know the energy of the day. Uh, mm. That's what I've done on our, um, our Instagram handle. I sometimes call it energy, energy of the day, things that come in, and I write it as energy of the day. So um, maybe you could answer Karina about being psychic or medium or what you count yourself, but you're certainly better at bringing in uh, Walter than I am. And I know you could do it right now and you could say something to Porter, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you answer that. I think um, people, you know, they're seeking reassurance, most people. They want reassurance. They want something they can hold and grab onto. Um, and we don't channel dead grannies for example auntie Flo is here did she have a white handbag and wear red shoes uh we don't do that it's just as Andy says it is a vibration and walter's just here and he is a connection to source or all that is sometimes i don't always channel walter sometimes i channel all that is i can't really explain it it's 
but I don't, we don't channel dead grannies and say that you should put the numbers one, seven, and nine in the lottery <laughs> tonight because you'll do that. We don't do that. I think the, it is a message. What we channel or what we get in our readings is a, a message of reassurance, but I think there would be no point as you know, Porter, if you got given all the answers, because otherwise we'd all drop your eyes and have speedboats. I think it's a way to give you clarity and help you on your journey and to give you different perspectives. So you can say, yeah, oh, maybe I have been in life raft for quite a long while. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. let's stop being a life raft. I mean, I'm just using that because that's the most recent thing we've talked about. Mm. I think that we're not clairvoyants. We don't see into the future and say, you know, in February, you will all do terribly well and get a new job. It's mm -hmm. more like, why do you want a new job? How do you think it'll change your life? I mean, you understand that sort of concept. almost. So we're not psychics, we're not clairvoyants, and we're not mediums, but mm -hmm. I hope that we give clarity through the energy of what we receive from our grandfather and the source and all that is, and the question because that is what our clients do. They send us a question and we ask for a little bit of background with it. So it's not like completely cold turkey, like, am I going to win the lottery? You know, <laughs> be, am I going to win the lottery because I've been so poor for so long and I really need a break? You know, you need some meat around the question. Mm -hmm. And I think we just hopefully give our clients clarity and most of them seem to feel that we do, which is great. Yeah, it's interesting. It seems like your your grandfather's sort of life mission was to um, understand this more fully. And I think in a sense, we're, we're all trying to understand this more fully because even the language around the, that we use, like what, when you described to me what you do, I would categorize that under the umbrella of psychic abilities. But for you, that's not a word that, you know, that resonates as much. So I, I think that that's kind of an interesting evolution to all of this too is what is the language that we use around this what what can what does a channel consist of what does a you know a, an intuitive person consist of is it psychic is it medium is it telepathy is it you know yeah. we often talk about you know our inner gps system which we all have sometimes mm -hmm. it off sometimes it just needs a little bit a bit of recalibration i think that hopefully we just give people some reassurance and clarity to let them find their own path as we said earlier it's not for us to determine whether they should go left or right or whether it's right or whether it's wrong it's just how about looking at it like this way and I think mm -hmm. you know Walter was born way before his time but unknowingly he opened a channel for want of a pun for us to be able to do what we do mm. and, how did you with love always with love it's um it's just like whoosh it is love how did you know it was it was walter what was when did you first discover that that's what was going on was it surprising yes i think um i can't remember when it became walter but for me um i had a rather fractious relationship with my father when pre-death he died and then sort of reconciled just before he died and it was fine and when he died he literally on the day he died I remember calling on to him and saying oh god I've just got this voice it's was it his head. father was Walter your father's father yes yeah he was my paternal grandfather absolutely and I just heard this voice going I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry and I was like, Ondine, I can't sleep. And this is the day of my father's death. And it was like, I'd never had this before. And it was insistent. And then it turned into automatic writing. Ondine was able to vocalize much earlier than I was. And then it just kind of turned into Walter. Mm. I don't know why or how it did. I mean, what about you, Ondine? Did it just sort of turn into Walter or did it suddenly, this is Walter, no. right? No, I think um, what was so good about Gary's um, boot camp and Ascension experience was I'd always been uh, 
I've been able to give answers to questions to my clients when they had uh, facial reflexology and reflexology, but I never said where it came from. So I'd say, oh, I've just thought about this for you. Or how about this? This has just popped into my head. And I still do that with people. I don't say anything because mm-hmm. it just pops into, it does just pop in, probably like you with your music, Porter, mm-hmm. you know, your your fabulous uh, songs and everything. Just, just, and even as we speak, you know, just speaking, we are sort of energetically connecting aren't we even as we speak so and just I think being by being in the boot camp and ascension experience um that really and I thoroughly recommend it to anybody that um just helped me open up and yeah that's where where I I I got the connection with Walter so a bit like you but yours was a bit more dramatic Karina wasn't it yeah yeah he's always there yeah (laughs) (laughs) so the the healing session that you gave me was oh it 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 was the most uh, incredible distance or in-person healing session I have I have ever experienced and I hadn't it, it was also so unique because I I've never had a you know I've I've had Reiki um well you don't exactly do Reiki I understand but I know that's sort of the the uh I don't know the point of reference that I have, I guess, for the energy work that you were doing and that you gave, but I, but you go in and out of being yourself and being Walter. It's just this like out of, out of this world kind of experience, um, which I was completely open to, but it was, I don't know. it, It felt just so beautifully supportive in that way. It was like, I don't even know. I don't even know really how to explain it. You would definitely have to experience this for yourself, but um, it, it was that an evolution. Did you know that that's how you were going to do sessions when you first started doing them that way? Or did it, was it just sort of like, Oh, I guess this is how we're doing yeah, it. I think. Um, so a few years ago, I got into Reiki and started doing that. But for anyone who knows Reiki, it's sort of quite prescribed. Hmm. And then not not a bad thing I mean you know but there is a methodology to it and they don't like you to mix it with other methodologies and I was went like oh okay well anyway I just carried on doing my Reiki and then once I was able to sort of Walter came through with my father it just evolved and now I would say that if you're looking for a healing session where you hear nothing don't come to me <laughs> because they sort of can't stop. Well, Walter can't stop talking. So it's me and I go, well, it's me now. And then Walter just comes whoosh, comes straight in and talks. And and he talks about lots of lovely things. He gives lots of reassurance. And it's extraordinary because you are in Seattle. I'm in middle England. Yet I could imagine you on my treatment bed. I walked around, I held your feet. I put my hands on your throat and did you get any of that sensation because I could feel it so like you were there um not I was imagining it but I don't feel it I have a hard time with visualizing in general that's not my my forte um but I definitely felt it like I felt energy it wasn't localized so much yeah Yeah. and it does a lot of energy to get it going. And on Dean, I've done energy on, but sometimes I reverse the energy through the body the other way to kind of like jump start it. But it actually, don't remember on Dean, it made you feel sick. It was too strong. Yeah. Yes. Having it. So I get a lot of messages when I channel. Uh, I absolutely love doing my healing. I really do. Um, but it's not for everybody. They don't want to hear someone talking. They don't mm. want to. They just want to lie there and have some gentle spa music. Well, fine. You know, mm. that's not what I do. It's just hopefully you felt energized afterwards or you felt relaxed and like, oh, that was yeah. I definitely felt relaxed. Well, I was crying like when I think when Walter came in the first time, I just started crying because 
the, I wish I had a recording because I really don't remember much of what was said, but you talked about like a rod that went through my body, which would, which was sort of like an extension of what Ondine had written in the, in the paper about these light codes, like that it sort of bent my mind a little bit about the, I don't know, visualizing, you know, having some sort of visual point of reference or like, um, I don't know, I'd never really considered my music as light code. So that was a really cool, um, a really cool way to describe that, that I'd never considered. Um, so I remember that, but I don't remember a ton. I just remember that everything that was said felt so, it felt so right, but also I knew, and this is really important because I think that this is also when you were talking about, you know, there are a lot of charlatans out there. Like I knew that nothing that was going to be said was going to be icky feeling, you know, like, like, uh, I don't know that you were going to implant some sort of idea that would, you know, have sort of an, a negative vibration or something. Like I knew that that wasn't going to happen. It felt super safe and everything that was said was, was really helpful, you know? Um, I think that um, one of the things that Ondine and I discussed a while back was that our energy is pure please God, that it remains like that. But do you know what I mean? It is pure, it's untainted. There's no agenda, there's nothing. We don't, we just want to give you what we get. And that is, when you talk, we talked about charlatans and things, this is you, you've got to maintain that purity. And I think that hopefully it continues that that's what we have. Because once I finished my healing session with you. I mean, I remember Walter saying that your hands were instruments of peace. Do you remember mm. that? Mm. I do, I do now, but no, I hadn't remembered that. Yeah. And he was very insistent that, that that's what your hands were. They were like instruments of peace, be it music, words, mm. or whatever. Um, and also he was saying that you use your voice to sing but you don't always use your voice to speak okay that was the that was the thing that stuck with me after the session the most because it was so profound and yet not something I had really considered um that's been really helpful I've been really noticing that yeah and it, it yes it's something so simple isn't it it's like oh wow that is really simple, but that he was very insistent about that. Yeah. So your hands are instruments of peace and you use a voice to sing, but not speak. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. So that's, and that has been something I'm working on. And actually, as I work through that, the, the tension in my shoulders is all but gone. I mean, I, I don't, I don't have it. It's, it's, yeah. Um, so that's been, that's been a really amazing um you know development with all this but yeah that that really stuck with me so thank you um oh, well, so glad yeah I just wanted to to go back to this um this beautiful sheet that I get um oh I know what I wanted to bring up is that Ondine mentioned my airpods she mentioned emf frequencies in the home in general like routers monitors television screens microwaves and most importantly wireless earpods so I don't think I told you this Ondine but for weeks I have been losing my airpods <laughs> <laughs> obviously subconsciously not meant to have them <laughs> right it's so funny so I because I had been using them a lot I love that they're noise canceling that's like you know that's such a dream because I don't know when you're a sensitive person like just being yeah. able to be in your own cocoon of sound is a pretty um uh in enticing proposition but I kept losing them and the 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 message that I kept getting or the thought but I, I sort of discounted as like oh that's just negativity that's just like limiting beliefs or whatever it was like you know uh you know, these aren't good for you that don't, these aren't good for you. Um, you don't need them. And, and I would find them and then I would lose them again. And, and when, when I read that, I was like, oh, that's why I keep losing them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, cause you said you felt your ears were magnetized to your shoulders. Oh. And I just got that, that 
you know the the, the vibe the vibration from I, I don't have earpods. I mean, I've only got this little clipping thing here, which which um, is just to listen here. But, um, you know, I put my phone on speakerphone quite a lot because I'm very sensitive to sound. And I do suffer a little bit from uh, tinnitus. So I have to be careful with the EMF frequencies and things around my home. But, you know, it's just a little small things. And you might have found, actually, you know, that you are not magnetized your shoulders because because of this. Um, but yeah, how funny that you know, they, they were lo- they were losing themselves, Porter. Right, right. <laughs> probably, probably more than you losing them. Yeah, how yeah. perfect. Yeah. Um, so my, my charger fell over. It. Um, yeah. So that was that was a really that was a really fun part of it. And then um, this actually really struck me too. Is um, Karina talked. I think twice about when like not getting stuck on not I'll quote you rather than paraphrase don't read too much into anything and constantly look for signs just be and then oh this this was this was good we say to you today to keep on the path that makes you happy stop stumbling on the stones in the path that are bothersome there is no need and I think you may have written something similar on Dean but I can't find it Yes, um, I did. I've actually started here. Well, it, it, it says um, uh, uh, it says um, w- when you take appointed times for yourself. I think I spoke about you know children, music, partner, self care, such things. Um, if you appoint time, regular time for these, you'll have less less tension because you'll be calling out your own day rather Mm. than the day calling you out. Mm. And I think we tend to call the day out when we have these obstacles or the energetic contraction, but when we're energetically expanded, we we call our own day. The day doesn't make us, we we make our own day. Right. Yeah, that, that's a that's a challenging one for me because it, structure is not something that I easily create. <laughs> <laughs> well, because yeah. you've got you're so creative and you want to, which is what I think what was picked up on was you're a perfectionist. Mm-hmm. And when you want to create something, you'll carry on till you've created it. Whereas people like me who are not that creative. I can stop and start things, Hmm. but when you're in the flow of your music or doing things, you've got to go from A to B rather than divert, which I do going B, C, D, E, F to get to B. Hmm. Um, So you're, you're a more direct route person, whereas I probably circumnavigate things a bit more than you do. Hmm. Yeah. Really interesting. Yeah. I've always, I've always been that way. Very like, if I start something, I'm very passionate about the things to the point of forgetting everything else. It's like, yes. oh my gosh, that was five hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was very perceptive. Um, is there anything else that we've forgotten to, to chat about that you wanted to share or about what you do or even things that don't have to do with this with the clarity sisters thing something no i was just gonna say i was listening to your songs of eden earlier i am the love that's my absolute favorite because of course that's (laughs) what we are so that's all i'm gonna say i love it and thank you so much for having us on your podcast uh i'm thrilled to be here so thank you so much it's been my pleasure yeah and so how can people Oh, Karina, did you want to say something? No, no, I was echoing on Dean's words, saying thank you so much too. We've really enjoyed it and we're so happy to do a reading and the healing and hopefully it sort of helps along the way. Yeah, yes. I I highly, highly, highly recommend um, what you two are doing. It's It's very special. So I really am grateful that you shared it with me so generously. Do you want to tell people how they can find out more about you? I'll post links in the show notes so they can click on it, but you can maybe tell. Yeah. Ondine, do you want to do it? Yes. We're on uh, our website is claritysisters.com. 
and our Instagram handle is Clarity Sisters Official on Instagram. So I will share that with people so that they can get Thank in you. touch with you. Yes, please do. And what a it's an amazing thing because you can do it for anyone anywhere. Right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, question actually. Do you do in person stuff at like locally for people? Does does that come into your practice at all or is is the the distance? Um I could do yeah, I can do the healing locally if somebody's in my yeah. area. Absolutely I can oh, do okay. that. Yeah. Um, cool. They can look on the website and contact us through that and it doesn't have to be Zoom and it doesn't have to be WhatsApp calling, it can be in person. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think uh, the dual energetic reading that we does that we do is not in person. Yeah, I think it yeah. would be complicated having a client there and both of us trying to do a reading at the same time. Right. I right. think tune into the energy of the question rather than the actual person in front of us for that. Yeah. But yeah. The healing can be done remotely or in person, and animals too. I like doing animals. Ah, oh, okay. Cool. Wonderful. Although the cats find it a bit um, too much. What's that? The cat. I have cats. Oh. One absolutely loves it, and the other one just runs. It's <laughs> just like says, this is nice. And the other one says, nope, not for me. Anyway, it's great. But thank you so much, Paul. It's been lovely to talk to you and uh, tell you a little bit about what we do. Yes, thank you. Thank you all so much. So we will see you in the next episode and bye. Thanks for tuning thank into the you. podcast, y'all. Please like, subscribe, rate, comment, whatever the platform you listen to podcasts on offers you as a way to let its algorithm know that you're enjoying these episodes. That really helps. Also, there's some links in the podcast description notes that allow you to support the podcast in a way that benefits you and us so please check those out and if you'd like to stay in touch with me you can sign up for my mailing list at portersinger.com we'll see you in the next episode bye